Hey everyone, welcome back to Bible Verse Breakdown. In this video, we're going to be breaking down Psalm chapter 58 verse 3, which reads, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. The psalmist seems to be telling us here that wicked people might not have acquired their unrighteous qualities over time, but are born with them. This has big implications, especially when God is brought into the picture. Thus, it's an issue worth investigating, and in this episode of Bible Verse Breakdown, we'll briefly dig into God's Word to see what it has to say about this. There are instances in the Bible where wicked people acquired their wickedness at birth. A prime example is Esau, the son of Isaac. Even before he was born, God had already told Rebekah in prophecy that the elder of her two children would serve the younger according to Genesis chapter 25 verses 21 to 23, denoting that something abnormal had happened. Let's consider verse 23 alone, as it is important to this discussion. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. This was predetermined before their births. However, after they were born and they grew up, it gradually became clear who was God's own and who wasn't. Esau demonstrated his foolishness by selling his own birthright for a morsel of meat, which the book of Hebrews says was an action that declared Esau profane. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully, with tears. That is Hebrews chapter 12 verses 16 and 17. A whole chapter of the book of Romans was dedicated to this issue, and Apostle Paul in that account highlighted the spiritual influences preceding their births that played a role in who they would become in the future. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by her father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That is Romans chapter 9, verses 10 to 13. This means Esau's wickedness was not caused by the society he grew up in, but by a spiritual seed sown into him by evil spirits, prior to his birth, and based on that, he was condemned in God's sight. Even after his death too, God continued to pronounce judgment on him and his counterparts using his prophets. He said through Obadiah, Shall I not in that day, said the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed, to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. That's verses 8 to 10. Consider Jacob's sons as well. Jacob, as we know, was a righteous man who served God well, but all his sons, with the exception of Joseph, were wicked people. In Genesis chapter 34, after Shechem slept with their sister Dinah and desired to make her his wife, Jacob's sons, seeking revenge, deceitfully advised him and his people to be circumcised, so that, as they were recovering, they would kill them and take their wealth. We're also familiar with the story of how they sold their own brother Joseph into slavery because of their envy in Genesis chapter 37. These people were just born to be like this. It certainly wasn't their father that taught them. We should note though that this same principle applies equally to God's side of the equation. There are people who are born with the ability to serve God faithfully. It just comes with them at birth. Look at Hezekiah and Josiah. These two kings were raised by wicked parents who ruled Israel badly, yet something within them rejected the wickedness they saw, to the extent that they reversed what their own fathers did when they came into power. David the psalmist said that he was in this condition too. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. That's Psalm 22 verses 9 and 10. In fact, there is a special class of people called apostles who are in this condition. Those who become apostles have qualities necessary for the top tier spiritual work they do right from birth. Apostle Paul, being one of them, said those of his class are predestinated. 
according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. See also Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and 30. And the cherry on top. God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, was destined to be a righteous man who would advance God's purpose of salvation through his preaching. Right from childhood, he displayed an unparalleled interest and knowledge of Scripture, according to Luke chapter 2, verses 40 to 52. And it all came together when he was officially anointed with the Holy Spirit and declared by God to be his representative on earth in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. This is my beloved Son, in whom... I am well pleased. Now that we understand this, let's go back to the statement of the psalmist and try to see what he was really talking about. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. The psalmist here was actually speaking of false prophets. Just as we discussed earlier, these people do not learn to teach lies at adulthood. They had the DNA for such things at birth. That's why some of them can build mighty congregations, some global, and earn immense amounts of money while never feeling guilty about how they're making it. God spoke about them all the time, from Genesis to Revelation, because to Him, one cannot be more wicked than them. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap, they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great. And waxen rich, according to Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 26 and 27. They prey on people who don't have spiritual knowledge to deceive them for their own ends. These kinds of people are not only found in churches, by the way. Their counterparts are in governments, businesses, and other institutions. Their motives are the same, to distract people from paying attention to what God is doing and prevent them from being able to understand spiritual truths. Such ones are destined to do what is wrong, and it's hard for them to repent of their ways. And I think that is where I'm going to stop on breaking down Psalm chapter 58 verse 3, which once again reads, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. If you enjoyed this video and like the way that I broke down this verse, then hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already and click the notification bell to be notified when we come out with our next video. Have a good day, and God bless you.